Hello and welcome to day two of Mental Health Awareness Week for 2020. My name is Heather and awesome to see Luke in the chat. How are you? The resources for this week just arrived after we've streamed yesterday. So I have some awesome posters in the background. I've turned myself around, so hopefully they should read accurately. And I've let my hair down. <laughs> uh, these are some of the things. There's some postcards, they call them. And they have some writing on the back with ideas. And it's got the themes for this week. So today's chat is going to be about these, what these postcards say, the themes. They've used a model called Te Whare Tapafa, which is like a meeting house. And it's all the elements of that. We talked about this last year in Mental Health Awareness Week. And it should be good. The theme for today is actually Wairua, which is um, discover or rediscover well-being or the wonder in everyday things. And on that note, we had some awesome uh, submissions yesterday. So, just my unorganizedness. <laughs> this is Let Your Light Shine Cup from Midori Pro or Michelle that she sent in and this is Luke's I don't give a sip cup <laughs> and we talked about hey the extra meal welcome we talked about having a cup of coffee and enjoying that enjoying that moment and these are some of the cool cups that our friends sent in so thank you for doing that you guys that was awesome it has been a while uh, this week I'm doing a whole week of live streams to celebrate and raise awareness about mental health. New Zealand has a whole week dedicated to it, Mental Health Awareness Week. It runs from September 21st to 27. I'm doing five days, Monday to Friday, here in New Zealand of live streams. Yesterday we had one which was mindful colouring. And today is more of a chat. We're going to talk through some of the themes because they make amazing resources to help us. So, yeah, hope you enjoy it. I am usually doing art. We did art yesterday and we will be doing mindful colouring again tomorrow for day three. And then I'll have another chat day on Thursday here in New Zealand or for day four. And the fifth day will be an activity kind of day. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to switch back and this is going to be awkward, but switch that one off. Scroll back up to the top. Reimagine well-being together is a theme for this year. Last year was about connecting with nature and that theme still runs through everything that they do. And it's obviously something that resonates with me. <laughs> so there's the details there. If you want to follow along on social media, this week they are doing a photo well-being ch challenge. Sorry. It is the Māori language. Hey, not so busy. Uh, thank you for subscribing for four months. You're amazing. So, he tirohanga, anamata, reimagine well-being together. Uh, if you want to follow the photo well-being challenge on social media or just anything about this week, it's hashtag M-H-A-W-N-Z. So this is the image that they have. And this is what we coloured in yesterday for day one. Uh, we added some extra things around the outside of well-being activities that we do and that included uh, riding bikes, writing letters and listening to music, watching the birds. So if you want to share what you do for your well-being, I'd love to know. The actual mill said, I heard it's a pretty mid-level language to learn unless I heard wrong. I don't know, it depends. I think learning languages depends on people's abilities, I guess. Uh, but I wish that it was more... They're trying to bring it into more things, but I think they could do better in terms of like schooling and incorporation into New Zealand culture and how we do things. So that's just my take on that. So this year, like I mentioned yesterday, has been very different and we've had to really reimagine well-being, work uh, and our coping strategies. 
So getting through together is kind of like coming together, sharing our experiences and working through things together. You'll notice down in the bottom that it's from the Mental Health Foundation as well as All Right NZ and that's a Ministry of Health thing. They've done and I'm really proud of the resources that they create and how available they make them. So this is the beginning. Kia ora. Whether you're looking for new ways to refuel, recharge and be there with Fofano, Mental Health Awareness Week is a chance to build on the simple things that we've been doing to look after ourselves and to reimagine what we what well being looks like together. So they've got ideas and I mentioned Te Whare Tapafa, that's their model. And it inspires the activities that they've got which are on these postcards. The website uh, to go to for more information is mhaw.nz. If you are worried about someone, they have this here, which is really helpful. Um, here in New Zealand, the emergency number is 111. We have a text or call number free uh, for any time if you need some help or support. We've got Lifeline, the Suicide Crisis Helpline, Youthline, and Supporting Families. So yesterday's theme was recharging with others. Fano, that's like your family, your extended family. <laughs> Luke said toll free for the number. Yeah. And I think that this year we've had to reimagine how we connect with people. We mentioned yesterday about Discord and communities and voice chats and video calls and that kind of thing. Because getting together in person hasn't been possible or easy. So what are some of the things that you like to do with other people? Do you usually play sports? Do you have family gatherings? Uh, do you have social activities that you do with others? This one goes into explaining it a bit more. Taha Fano, family and social well-being. It's the people we care about who recharge us and make us feel like we belong. Fano isn't just our immediate relatives; it includes our friends, poor mahi, colleagues, sorry, iwi or community, the people who are close to our hearts. And then there are some activities and ideas. Here at the top is about connecting via text or over the phone. Or face to face if safe and possible. Um, check on older neighbours who might need support. You could draw a connections tree to help you visualise the connections that you've got if you wanted to. And other suggestion there is give new activity give oh words add <laughs> give new activities a go alongside tamariki which is children to enjoy each other's company and really connect as a family or whanau. So Sparklers is their organisation for helping parents and people with young children. So how do you look after or recharge with your family? There's a space there to draw the connections tree. The Māori culture has lots of proverbs that they use and this one is about strength. Not being of yourself, but being that of many. Ihara taku, toa e te toa takitahi, inari e toa takini tini. Excuse my pronunciation, I may have marked that up, but yeah. One of the things that I've been doing. Oh, Luke said not to put a downer on things, but it can be rough when you reach out to someone and they don't respond. Absolutely. I think that that's pretty difficult uh, to be left hanging or to be ghosted or just to not have that person come back. Uh, hopefully, in your network of people, if you drew out your connections, for example, you'd have other people that you could reach out to. Um, yeah, it is a challenge when, you know, you're unable to connect with someone or they don't 
respond or reciprocate. Absolutely. But like I said, hopefully within your connection network, there is more than that one person that you can reach out to. You had a good point uh, yesterday, Luke, about writing letters to someone that you care about. And that's a way of connecting with people. And it's like, there's a time delay on certain things. A letter takes a very long time. It's snail mail <laughs> and postage throughout the world is difficult uh, at the moment. But that's one way. DMs are another way. And that can also have a time delay too. Uh, and if you need that instant kind of interaction, hopefully you're able to connect on a phone call or a voice chat. That's what I love about Discord. Yeah. Today's theme is Rediscover Everyday Wonder, Wairua. And it's like noticing the little things, whether that's a bird you see fly by, uh, the patterns of the clouds, that one looks like a whale, <laughs> uh, a bumblebee flying by, the raindrops, how the wind moves the trees, um, or whether it's your favourite coffee cup and watching the steam rise off it, or a nourishing meal, you know, just pick the little things so that could as sort of take more of a moment, slow down, look around you, listen, breathe in that moment, and see what you notice. It could open up things that you didn't realize that were there, or show you more detail by taking a little bit more time. So Taha Wairua is your spiritual well-being. And it's about taking notice, being present, of the things that make us feel awe, hope, strength, unity and connection. For some, wairua is faith or a higher power. But when our wairua is strong, it's easier to feel good and face challenges. If your wairua isn't feeling strong, try to think about what wairua means to you and ways to strengthen it. It's going to be different for everyone. That's what I said yesterday about... We're each on our own journey. It'll be different for each of us. The challenges that we're facing right now are different. But in sharing our experiences, hopefully we can share some tips and maybe inspire or just share a moment together as we think about well-being. So here are some ideas for tuning into your wairua. Go for a walk if possible. Take notice of your surroundings. Invite someone to go with you if you can. Go for a bike ride. Start your day with mindfulness. Make and share a playlist of songs that make you feel good. I like a whole variety of different music for different moods and activities. And throughout these streams and my other streams that I do, we've got sort of an ambient playlist to just be there in the background. Luke said 90s pop. Nice. Bit of Shakira. <laughs> Celebrate different cultures or language weeks. We have also in September not only Mental Health Awareness Week, but uh, Te Wiki o te, o te Reo Māori, which is New Zealand Māori Week, Māori Language Week. And that's a chance to really highlight our, and celebrate our cultural heritage and open up sort of different ideas and concepts to maybe see if they work that you can tune into them and use. So how do you take notice and rediscover everyday things around you? The proverb for Wairua is when it touches your heart, it lifts your spirit. And this one resonates because I always like to say what lights you up. And I think that's the key. Something that 
really sparks a light in your heart, helps you feel good. The next theme is return to nature. <laughs> hey, Sage Rage, how are you? I'm well. We're celebrating and raising awareness about mental health uh, this week. And I'm going through some of the themes because New Zealand's got these really great resources for mental health. And I thought it'd be cool to jump on a live stream and share that with you. And hopefully we can reimagine well-being together. So what? Are some of the things that you do for your well-being? I would love to know. Spending a moment in nature, if possible, is a favourite thing that I like to do. I've got a video coming out sometime with some nature stuff that I've captured to share uh, road trips around New Zealand, which I'm excited for because travel was this chaotic thing. Uh, and to give others that opportunity to see something different, I'm excited for. Sage Rage said, yeah, that's awesome. Always a great thing to do and get out there. So our connection to the world around us has a huge impact on us. Uh, my favorite quote is about those who feel like they're lost, have lost their connection to nature, and we are a part of nature. Sage Rage said, I tried, I read, I try to take time for myself and decompress and also be around people even when I don't feel like it. Isolation is the worst thing. Outside is always great. Sunshine is a great feeling. I agree. Absolutely. We can have those moment connections with nature by looking out the window, for example, or listening to the world around us and taking time to notice them. So Fenua is our connection to the land. It's soil, plants, animals, and people. Tangata Fenua. It's the earth, earth through which we are connected to our tūpuna, our ancestors. And Fenua is a place of belonging, and it's comforting that it's never too far away. So here they've got ideas for connecting with Fenua. Start your day with a karakia, which is a prayer that acknowledges the Fenua. The bird sings, the morning has dawned, the day has broken, behold, there is life. Korehi te manu, takari mai i te ata, ka ao, ka ao, ka awatea, te Māori ora. When we can't get out there and and be a part of nature. That's what I love about photos. And this week they're doing a photo challenge where you take photos of what well-being looks like and feels like to you. So if you want to participate in that, feel free. If you want to share them in Discord, do that. Um, I love photography because it helps me slow down and take notice of the thing that I want to capture. Like there is a balance between just looking behind a screen the whole time but I like to sort of stop and take notice of the area around the thing that I want to photo photograph <laughs> and then try and capture that so there's a whole sort of steps to mindfulness in the photography process I think so you can take a photo or do a drawing of a place you're connected to and think about why it gives you strength Go outside and see how many native plants you notice. We have a lot of native plants in New Zealand and native birds. And spend time in your own backyard with your tamariki, your children, if you have them. 
and remind them that Fenua is where our kai comes from. So they have an activity with sparklers about growing kumara, which is sweet potato. Or your dog, said Luke. Absolutely, your pets. Your dog. Your cat. I have fish. <laughs> I like sitting there and watching them. Uh, spend some time with nature, whichever nature you can get access to. The theme about food and where our food com comes from is about growth and obviously that natural process of where the food comes from and appreciating the effort that goes into having the food that we can enjoy on the table. The proverb for this one is I am the land and the land is me. Ko te whenua, ka o, ka o, ko te whenua. Ko ao. I think. Ko te whenua, ko ao. Ko ao, ko te whenua. Tomorrow's theme is going to be, well that might be of the nature one, but the next theme is refuel, refuel your body. Tinana. There's a cat, it could be a dog, <laughs> doing downward facing dog with the kids. The, I watched some cartoon and there was, they were talking about goat yoga. I don't know if that's a real thing or not, but I'd be interested to find out. But I know that one of my friends in podcasting, Emily Prokop, has been doing yoga and helping, it helps her be more flexible and give herself some time to stretch and if you've got a little bit of space it's possibly easy to incorporate you've got to do what works for your body and where you're at as well so taha tinana physical well-being it's about how your body feels and how you care for it. Refueling your body helps you to feel mentally well. We talked yesterday about well-being being... Well-being is holistic. It's not just your physical wealth, health or happiness or anything like that. It's all of those things combined. Sage Rage said, I've heard yoga is great and does wonders. Yeah. I... If possible, it's helpful to go to a class uh, to get corrected on your posture and things. But you can do it from home on your own as well. And it's amazing how after time, stretching each day in the yoga poses can really free up your body. Thanks so much. Not so busy. <laughs> he said, great stream. Love the information you're handing out. Luckily, I have great resources to draw on and I'm just using this opportunity to share them this way with hopefully more people so I like to think about things like disconnecting so we can be wired and connected all the time and sometimes we need a bit of downtime so what do you do to rest disconnect recharge and refuel yourself we talked about nourishment yesterday, which is a way of framing how you eat, drink, and put good things into your body. So, sometimes your tinana might not be where you'd like it to be, and this might be beyond your control. But what's important is that you do what you can to nurture it. Luke actually mentioned in the Discord yesterday about funding that had come through for people to have uh, sign language interpreters when they're out in social settings like after work drinks, which I think is amazing because it opens up accessibility to social situations. And I hope that more support and resources go into Things like that. 
So ideas for refueling your T-Nana. Have you been to the doctor lately to get a checkup? Kai or food nourishes your body. What is your favourite meal? Sage Rage does Twitch streams where she cooks and makes wonderful food creations. If you haven't checked it out, they are worth tuning in for. I will link that in the description of this video if you're watching the replay. So you can check that out. Savory Sundays is brilliant, that's what it's called. <laughs> Savory Sundays with Sage Rage on Twitch. What's your favorite meal? What do you enjoy? My favorite one is lasagna. I really like making lasagna. Uh, I don't usually make the pasta. I usually have store-bought pasta there to do it, but making lasagna and making it ahead of time so that it has time to sort of uh, soak in its juices. <laughs> and it's nice and ugh, it's like one of those warm hearty meals like stew I guess or a roast meal or a nice vegetable dish roast vegetables mmm yum <laughs> at work or wherever you are maybe you could design a well-being space a little nook that you can have some mindful mindful coloring some books. We did mindful coloring yesterday and we're going to do some more tomorrow because they have a different one. Uh, a bean bag, a nice chair, somewhere to relax. If you're working rem remotely, you could, like it says, look at somewhere at home if it's not your workspace. And be grateful for your tinana. Write a letter to your body. It might sound cheesy, but Thank you, arms, for helping me hug, you know. I'm grateful for my sight so I can see outside and enjoy nature. I'm very grateful when I don't have migraines. <laughs> That's one thing uh, that I enjoy. Sage Rage said, yes, cooking can be a way to help with mental health as well. Absolutely. Gathering the ingredients, preparing them going through the cooking process and then plating the resulting creation she also mentioned journaling and getting any or all th thoughts out that's a really good point using a gratitude or <laughs> gratitude journal or just a paper and write something down or a little notebook there's things like morning pages or one that I liked, which is called 750 words, if you had, if you're doing it digitally, I guess. But there's a nice feeling when using a pen on paper. <laughs> Luke said, Dear Diary. Another thing that I mentioned to Luke yesterday actually was about recording um, voice memos to yourself. And another uh, alternative option is there's a service that gives you the opportunity to write a letter to yourself today. And it will send it to you at a predetermined date in the future that you that you choose. And it's really cool. The very first year I did it, I wrote this lovely letter to myself, scheduled it, and then carried on with my life. And I had set it for a year from that day that I wrote it. And it was so bizarre to get this email a year later because I hadn't remembered I had completely forgotten about it and I got this little love note to myself and it blew me away because at that time it was something that I needed to hear and yeah <laughs> Luke mentioned about how we might be talking too much but it can be just like talking to your best friend Sage Rage said so the quote for this one is an active soul for your well-being when we move not only it does it help our body be flexible um, and keep it you know working as it should 
It can help you change the space that you're in, take you to a new place, which helps you change your perspective, which can help you with your well-being. So some of the things there are to think about how you nurture and refuel your tinana. The next theme is refresh your mind. Hinnaro. So this one is about mental and emotional well-being. It's your mind, your heart, your conscience, your thoughts and feelings. It's also a sense of purpose that you have. So just like your physical health, your mental and emotional health needs to be nurtured as well. So what do you do to stimulate and refresh your mind so that you can cope with the ups and downs of life? We talked yesterday about our buoyancy. That's kind of thinking about how resilient we are, how well we can bounce back when things aren't good. I went to a well-being discussion or workshop uh, a while ago and she, the lady who was presenting it, came up with some ideas like in terms of our buoyancy, people just need like tools or flippers to help kick back up to the surface and keep their head above water. So what are some of the tools that you use, like journaling, like making a meal, like exercising? Share your thoughts and feelings with someone you trust. That came up yesterday in letter writing. Expressing your emotions can help you feel less alone in what you're going through. That voice memo idea can do the same thing in that it's sort of private, um, but it helps you hear your stream of consciousness or your thoughts. And that might be easier to put down on paper or it might be easier to just have that free flow kind of conversation. Or call a friend. I really enjoyed uh, back in the day when I used to have regular weekly calls with a friend who lived afar. And we just talk about things that have been happening, catch up catch up <laughs> and share what we're working towards because that gives you something to help you keep moving forward another suggestion here is take five to think of five positive thoughts or good things that have happened this week one was for me the resources for this week turned up yesterday which was just in time two uh, super sunny day on sunday allowed me to go out, uh, go for a motorbike ride, and really enjoyed that experience, being out and seeing the countryside. Number three was getting laundry done. Might not like seem like much, but I find it a challenge when the weather is bad here and the laundry kind of piles up because I've got to manage power with my solar power and trying to get the washing or laundry dry is a challenge. Uh, when the weather's not so good. So I managed to get laundry done. That was a bonus. Um, another one, number four. What are some things that have good for you that have happened so far this week? It's early in the week, so there's still plenty of time for good things to happen, but if you wanted to share, that would be awesome. Another one for me would be doing these live streams and being able to hang out and share and talk about well-being with you. And number five would have to be, <laughs> since we're early in the week, we'll pick Luke's one. He had some lunch with a friend yesterday. Nice. What did you have for lunch? Getting t a chance to spend time with friends. Is awesome. Thanks for the follow, Sage Rage. <laughs> I 
Luke had a chicken schnitzel toasty. Mmm. Another thing to do is to reflect on the challenges that you've overcome and the strengths that you've discovered. So while we have challenges, we can, if we keep track of how we manage those challenges and what we learn from it, you can kind of draw on that and use it going forward. Sage Rage said her son turned 13 yesterday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. We talked a little bit about celebrating occasions yesterday, which was awesome. So, <laughs> belated happy birthdays for yesterday. Another option is to try something new or to rediscover an old interest. Uh, have you ever played guitar or an instrument or you don't currently do it now, maybe pick up a guitar if you've got one or borrow one or maybe you've got some mindful coloring books and you haven't had a go at them yet. Sit down and try them. Maybe you want to try sketch something for the first time. Maybe you want to record a podcast <laughs> or a video for YouTube or you want to play a new game that you got. Um... We talked about rediscovering or discovering what's available on Twitch and all the different creative people and the way in which people can share their experiences and passions like gaming. It's amazing. People can play the same game but share it in a totally different way. But what is something that you used to do that you don't do now that you could kind of reconnect with? The quote for this one, or the proverb, is when the mind is free and the spirit is willing, anything is possible. This one says, Aroha mai, aroha atu. This is something that I'm going to do. And if you want to share, I would love to see what you come up with. Write a message of aroha, love. Show you care by writing a message to someone in your life who makes a difference or who might need a bit of aroha, a bit of just a note to say you're thinking of them. Pop it in the post, drop it off if they live nearby. Or hide it as a surprise for a loved one. I think that's a neat uh, suggestion. And we talked about snail mail. We talked about at the writing a letter to yourself or journaling. Maybe in your journal you could decorate the page and interact with it a bit more. Maybe you could do the same thing for this note for someone else. Maybe you could make them a card. And decorate it with something. The last one is, the last proverb is, kindness sown is kindness you shall receive. It's that idea of what you put out into the world will come back. And I think it's like a smile. Hopefully, <laughs> when you smile, it spreads and you can light up the world with just simple things that you take and you do and share. So, yay. That, uh, well, those are the themes for this week. And it's just a little reminder. That's all this week is about is just giving you a chance to really think about reconnect with the things that light you up that help rest give you rest and help recharge you and refuel you and yeah thank you to everyone who's been here part of today and who's shared what you do for your well-being 
There is the Mindful Wellbeing Photo Challenge, where you can take a photo of nature or what well-being looks like and feels like to you and share that. And you can use hashtag MHAWNZ to, sh- to see what people are sharing on social media, on Twitter or Instagram or wherever else. <laughs> uh, or you can share them in Discord if you're part of Discord communities or you could write a note for someone and send that this week. You could write yourself a note. You could try out yoga. You could try out an activity that you've done before that you haven't connected with for a while and kind of rediscover that. Maybe it could be just checking on a neighbor or popping into a discord like not so busy is great at doing and just waving and hi and saying hi. You know, it doesn't take much. It's little things. <laughs> Luke said more like noga, not yoga. If that's not your thing, <laughs> you know. Luke likes to go for bike rides. And hopefully the weather is good and he'll be able to get out and go on one. Check in with yourself. I think that's the key thing. Currently the weather's awful for Luke apparently, which is not so good. <laughs> but hopefully it'll improve. Hopefully some of the good weather from here will head over your way. But yeah. Think about how each of those themes relates to you. Return to nature. Refuel your body. Rediscover everyday wonder in the smallest of things. Refresh your mind. One of the ways of doing that is changing your perspective, getting a change of space, or making a little space for you that you can do mindful stuff in or just take some time out. Recharge with others and reimagine your well-being together. That's it for this session. (laughs) It was just a chat sharing the themes for this week. Uh, really cool resources that they have. I'm very grateful that they sent them out. So these are all the postcards that we just looked at. Thanks, not so busy. Awesome info. Yeah. One thing that I did want to share is that I have uh, some downtime dice which have little prompts on it for activities to do. So if you're stuck and you can't think of something to try out the downtime dice is a great way of giving you a prompt and you can use that however which way you want there is an online version of that so I will drop the link in the description of this video so you can check it out you don't have to have an actual physical dice or you can make your own Um, or you could allocate the activities to like a d20 or something I don't know and make up your own activities but just a suggestion None of these things you have to take on board or do. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Tomorrow is going to be day three of these live streams that I'm doing. We're going to have another mindful coloring session. It'll be longer than today. And after that, we're going to have the Geeks Rising live stream with members of Geeks Rising at over on YouTube, the Geeks Rising YouTube channel. So it'd be cool if you wanted to check that out, catch up with members of Geeks Rising and see what we've all been up to and what we're working on. And yeah, I'm going to ask them about how they've reimagined their well-being for 2020. And yeah, thank you so much for being here and hanging out. Thank you to our stars today for supporting the stream. Luke for being one of our moderators. Sage Rage for the follow and Not So Busy for the resub. You're all amazing. Thank you for hanging out in the chat and for watching. If you enjoy the replay, let us know in the comments what you do for your well-being and what you got from these themes from today. And until next time, be empowered by nature.